Welcome everyone. Today is September 11th. This is the IPFS all end. Uh, welcome to everyone that joined this call. Today I will be the moderator and Frank will be the note taker. As always, uh, we invite everyone to add items to the agenda. If you have something to show, something to ask, something to grab everyone's attention to look uh, at. And if not, uh, we always have a session of demos in the end. If you have something to show, uh, please do add an item to the, to the agenda. Cool, we are getting more people just now. Thank you for joining. Cool, so right now, does anyone as an item to add to the agenda? Let me grab one. Post the link in chat so people can see it. All right. Did did you just now? I s did you just post it, Jeremy? Okay. So I'll just go first. Uh, with the first item. So GSIPFS 026, there is a very big issue on GSIPFS that basically says version 026 release with a star and a rocket. And it lists all of the features and bug fixes that are coming with this new release. Um, there is a lot of performance and memory usage improvements. There is fixes that happen to, due to infrastructure changes. Um, there there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, I intend to release it on Wednesday. As usual, typically we, we kind of like prepare the release, we create the issue, we start identifying what is left, what we want to include in the release. And then when, uh, once we are ready, which was today, uh, I complete all of the highlight section and all of the future um, notes. And I announce it through like IRC, Reddit, Twitter, and so on, and give it two days to see if someone like finds any problem. Uh, right now, like all tests pass, both interop and unit tests, so we we don't have any issues there. Uh, if you find an issue with this new release uh, and to test it, just install it from master. Uh, let us know as soon as possible. And, and yeah, like if you are using JSIPFS today, definitely try out Master because you should see a lot of performance improvements in the browser. And if there is no questions, uh, Steven, you are still with microphone problems. Uh, do you think you can find a way to connect your microphone? Like once you dialed in with your phone, and that worked pretty well. Hi, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how does the new uh, ver version of JS uh, IPFS compare in performance with Go IPFS and memory usage? And so uh, we don't have those metrics. Like we do have some benchmarks, and like we we do have like a repo called IPFS performance profiling, and it compares JS IPFS in nodes, JS IPFS in the browser both Chrome and Firefox, and then compares it to YPFS. Uh, like the bold, like the rough <laughs> measure is like YPFS is faster. Like, <laughs> like the, it, it is like kind of hard to beat like uh, an implementation that has access to multiple cores and, and, and that uh, can like, use the machine's resources. Like when, when a, a JSIPFS node runs in the browser. browser. Sometimes I hear myself. I don't know if someone is like, maybe it's you Steven with the mic. Um, okay. So yeah, like, you know, like when JSIPFS runs in the browser, it's really uh, running in a single thread environment and like using the already sandboxed environment that Chrome is like puts it available. So if you are looking for performance and if you don't want, need to run IPFS in the browser, Definitely go with go IPFS. There's no question about it. And uh, I'm sorry. My second question see, uh, question is: uh, Do you have plans to for the uh, uh, system level implementation, yeah, like Rust or or C, for better performance than Go IPFS? And uh, if you do, is there some some more information about it? Yeah. So um, there is. 
uh, as I mentioned on the last island, there is already a lot of the pieces of IPFS built in multiple languages. Uh, some of the pieces are built in Rust, some of the pieces are built in C, some of the pieces are built in even Python. So there is a, a lot of effort all over the place. Right now, we invest a lot of time and energy on developing the Go and JS. But I would be curious that like, if you are having performance issues, what are those? And, and, and if you can help us identify what are the performance bottlenecks? We know that we still have some space to improve uh, in both implementations right now. So uh, it is wiser to invest the time in the implementations that we have right now and make sure that they are really, really performant than starting a new one or investing a lot of time in a new one just for the sake of performance. Uh, and I know that like Jeremy might even like share an update on that, that like a lot of performance improvements have been happening uh, in the last couple of releases of GoIPFS. Yeah, so uh, there has definitely been a lot of performance improvements going on, especially in 0.4.10. Um, if you're having specific performance issues, I definitely recommend like uh, filing an issue so we can like take a look at it because um, we're we're getting down on like the main issues and if there's something specific that's blocking you then yeah definitely let us know and we'll take a look at it. I'm more interested in joining the effort and contributing code personally. So I'm trying to find my place in that context. Got it. So um I can point. I can also leave on the notes here of the the islands, and we can also like talk through IRC. There is like some entry points for people that are looking to help to contribute to modules or to start a new implementation even, and I can point you to those places so that you know where help is needed for both of those languages. Yes, thank you. No problem. Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, all right, Stephen, is your mic working? Can you ask your question now? Uh, yes, my mic is working. Sorry, actually, the volume was turned down. The other problem was no, um, unrelated. Um, with the relays, uh, sorry, has someone merged the uh, JS IPFS uh, relay fixes yet? Yeah, they're, uh, they're merging. But none of the relay IPFS stuff is merged into mass or mass yet, so. But the fixes we, the issues we found um, last week, those are fixed and pushed into the, the, the relevant branches. Okay, just because before we do the release, we might want to try uh, merging this into master. So uh, we are fine with doing another release for Relay. Um, I, I briefly chatted about that with Vizio today on RIC. And, and the thing is, so like in, in JS when we have the habit of creating what we call and the name just came out of nowhere, but like we call it the awesome endeavor, right? You might see some pink labeled issues or pull requests in just IPFS with saying awesome endeavor. And that essentially means that like there is some feature that requires so many changes across so many repos uh, that we list all of the PRs, we list all of the issues and we kind of like keep track it that way. Because if you want to test it, you know which repos to clone to like change the branch to NPM link and to connect them all together. And, and that's how we test when we need to change it like across like the, the entire stack. Uh, right now, like everything that is a fix or an improvement to relay can happen on the branch for relay, but none of those have been mer merged to master yet. Oh wait, so there is no relay in master yet? Yeah, there is no relay in master yet. But again, like if that's something uh, that's like we finish this week, we can release uh, another version this week because it is not a a, a breaking change. Like you, we can totally add it. All right. Yep, and I I I, I think we're waiting on basically me finishing up the the integration uh, into reality testing. Uh, Go JS. Um, it's been giving me a little bit of a headache, but uh, I've, I've done many tests manually, but there's no um, automated tests as of yet because I'm running solutions. But if we are able to solve those this week, then yes, we'll uh, probably be able to release it pretty soon. We were really hoping we can do that. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. And once we have relay, uh, we can. Um, 
start adding examples and like start having browsers connecting to Google IPFS nodes everywhere. Yep. Pretty cool. Awesome. Any other questions for this uh, item? Not sure if you are speaking with us, Jeremy. You're muted. Just okay. That's good. Cool. So this is it. Uh, Jeremy, you were adding something to the notes, weren't you? Didn't you say that in the beginning? No, no I don't think so. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Then. Yeah. I think we are good, man. Like, we, there is no other items on the agenda. If no one wants to speak about anything in particular, or yeah, I don't know. The only want... update from my end is um, we're gonna gonna be working on uh, hopefully get a release candidate cut today for the next release of GoIPFS, and then move forward from there. Hopefully, have the actual 411 release this week. Um, yeah. Sounds good. I already have a pull request for the SIPFS API. Once that release is done, that I already tested with the IPFS master that reduces cool. the size of like the bundle message. You're muted. Can you, could you hear me? There we go. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, the size of the bundle. So yeah, by 200K. So that's something. Oh crap. Um, compared <laughs> to what, what is it total? It was 600 and reduces to 400 something. It's close to 200K. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's impressive. Uh, yeah. So what was the it's, it is essentially because, like, so, like, right now, the way that. You unmuted you muted yourself again. No, it's not muting. It's my, someone is calling me. And so, because my phone is also connected to my headphones. It privileges my phone over my computer. <laughs> so sorry about that. I, I now went there. Play well. Cool. So I was saying, like JSIPFS, you can require a specific part of JSIPFS API. You don't have to like require the whole thing. So if you just want to use JSIPFS API to add files, which was, for example, one of the use cases of IPFS Mini, which was just like a a feature, a reduced feature set of JSIPFS API. Um, mm -hmm. You can just require that specific piece. And before adding a file, required to use also the object API because it was trying to get the file size. Remember that change I asked you, Jeremy? Right, uh, I remember that. And so since we removed that, now adding a file or getting a file doesn't require touching the object API, which doesn't import any of the IPLD packages, uh, which also doesn't import any of the crypto stuff, right? So which oh, was nice. like huge shims. That's why it gets like so compressed um, because it's just like really like sending files uh, and like fetching files as it should be. So, so yeah, that's going to be fun. So yeah, I, I, we are actually talking with the author uh, of IPFS mini to just converge efforts now that there is no need. It's like everything is modular. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. All right. Cool. So thank you for the update. Uh, oh, we have two demos. All right, I love it. Betchy, uh, Betchy, am I pronouncing that correctly? Is that you? Is it Viso? The demos? Uh, you're muted, Viso. Um, uh, hello. Um, yeah, hey. that was for me. Um, okay. And uh, nobody Go can pronounce name it's a polish name um everybody has trouble with that it's pronounced Maciej Kruger Maciej and um I never was in such a meeting I'm just 16 years old and um how should I demo this thing or what uh, uh I, I have no idea it's oh nice. uh, okay so welcome uh, we have these meetings every week and again, like we go through several topics of IPFS and then we do demos. The way to do demos typically is people like use the share screen button at the bottom of Zoom. So you are in the Zoom call, uh, sometimes the lower bar, the, the bar on the, the bottom disappears, but if you mouse over the bottom, you will have several options, invite, manage participants, pull link, and then there's like a green one saying share screen. Yeah, I see the button, uh, but uh, I don't know exactly um, what I should show, um, or can, can the others hear me? 
Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Oh, nice. Um, so let's uh, share this thing. Um, I have written a browser bundle for this, so it already works in the browser. Um, now I have just to find the window of home. Uh, mm, All right, exciting. Is the window visible? Um, so essentially, uh, it can like, only download files from other peers in the ZeroNet network. So maybe I should show what ZeroNet is first. ZeroNet is basically a um, peer to peer network um, which uh, has uh, sites. These are, um, uh, oh, maybe I should have prepared this thing better. I have no idea what I should say. Um, is, this, is this okay when I do this, um, this, this way I do this, or, um, uh, so um, this is ZeroNet, uh, this was written by Thomas Kuzidis, and it's um, the software that um, has basically distributed uh, websites, and Um, they have um, social network also, and I have uh, I took the protocol of ZeroNet and have added a peer to peer swarm, and um, um, yeah, it connects using the peer to peer WebSocket star, which, which is a module I have written um, some time ago, a week ago which uh, was also on the release roadmap for the IPFS release. And um, using this, I can already download files in the browser. And after all this stuff here finishes, I can show it's uh, currently still downloading files. And Now you can see uh, it um, downloaded the files. Um, so uh, I don't know. Um, should I go in detail how the cryptography behind this works or the me mechanism? Or uh, um, because I, I really have no idea what I should demo now. Uh, maybe maybe someone can. Yeah. So uh, I guess like we are not allowed to ask questions. Uh, some of us are familiar with ZeroNet. So right now you, you implemented the protocol from scratch, if I understood correctly, like you implemented the, the whole thing in JavaScript. Yes. Uh, okay. So, and then you replaced the network layer with the peer to peer. So, so this um, zero net implementation is not connecting to the normal zero net um, network, is it? I have uh, both swarms in the browser. The uh, zero net swarm is deactivated cause it uses um, trackers which uh, run over HTTP and UDP, which are both not accessible in the browser. But uh, the client for the PC has both forms. So I downloaded the site first with a PC client, uh, which has both the ZeroNet swarm and the P2P swarm. And uh, the browser client downloaded it from the um, ZeroNet, uh, uh, from, my, uh, from my PC, which uh, has both forms. Uh, Got it. So you have kind of like a proxy node to connect, like in your PC yeah. to connect between two networks, right? Yes. Will you be able to avoid having a proxy node at all? Like, will you be able to connect to the regular network from the browser? Um, that could work using relays, uh, maybe. I don't know how relays exactly work, but uh, it could be possible maybe using TCP connections over the peers that are connected in the WebSocket star network and have TCP. Got it. Is it, is it possible now to uh, like retrieve a website from ZeroNet using your proxy? Um, uh, you can only retrieve the websites. My proxy is seeding, and currently it has uh, some trouble downloading the rest of the files. There should be more than the content JSON, but it's buggy because um, it's not really finished. Um, uh, 
Currently, you can only download the files. Uh, my proxy node is seeding, but you can start your own, and the browser node will eventually find it and download the files from there. Um, Maybe it would be a good idea to demo uh, the browser node uh, too. Um, uh, I mean, the PC node. Who is furiously typing? Is that you, Steven? <laughs> uh, no, it's me typing. Okay, I just, okay, got it. Because it's I a have also thing. this um, <laughs> magical keyboard that is very loud. Um, uh, yeah, that's cool. Like, so pretty cool that like you implemented the protocol again, and like you replaced the network side for a peer to peer. Uh, um, would love to see it like connecting to the real network and like loading websites um, um, without the project. Can, uh, it can't show the website currently, but I can demo the browser. Um, I mean, the PC node too. But uh, there is nothing on the browser ex uh, except um, a simple web server. So I can mostly only show my terminal and uh, the debug output. Mm. Um, I have to first find the terminal because I have 100 windows open, I guess. <laughs> um, so um, this is currently um, the node. First, it starts connects WebSocket star, and then all the browser nodes start directly connecting to it. And mm -hmm. now, when I uh, go to the node um, to the web server, it adds the zero hello site, which is the site the browser downloaded. And now it's doing a lot of things. Um, most of the output is actually disabled. So basically, it. Um, Somewhere up here, it uh, uses BitTorrent. Oh, no. I have the complete debug output for trackers disabled. Um, so let's delete this first. You can see the files were downloaded. But mm -hmm. um, uh, mm. I hope um, I, I apologize for my slowness and my shyness. Um, it's it's my first conference or whatever this is. Um, uh, it's been great. Yeah, uh, I'm, oh, I'm I get too uh, stressed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but what was the excuse? Um, So now I have enabled all the debug output. It um, first creates um, an ID. And now you see a lot more debug output, for example, from Socket.io. And now comes the interesting part. When I reload the page, um, oh, that was too much. Yeah, I can't even show it so much. Um, so basically, it. Uh, um, It's going on. Okay, I think I can show this. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, first it does a request to the tracker, and when it uh, gets the peers, then it um, uh, connects to the peers using the zero JavaScript protocol, somewhere below here, maybe. Uh, I totally screwed up this demo. <laughs> Not at oh, all. Okay. It's cool. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Um, yeah. So it. Uh, I don't know how to demo this exactly. I, I have absolutely no plans. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No worries. Like I know that like you just jumped, like to do this demo uh, out of uh, invite day. So like it was like super short notice. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of work there. And a lot of things that are already connected, uh, they just need a little bit of polish uh, to make it more shiny. But like the the core is already on its way, so that that that's super cool. What took you to like what led you to start this project? Um, I looked at the ZeroNet code and uh, thought like, um, can this be run in a browser? Does it work in a browser? 
And then I first started developing the PC client, um, which at the beginning uh, didn't even have the peer-to-peer. Um, actually, I didn't start with the browser as the main idea, but I first wanted basically to have a client for ZeroNet because I found it a, a bit um, hard to use um, the Python version as modules. And then I had the idea of browsers. And then I added the peer-to-peer swarm after rewriting a few things. Um, and after one month of work, I finally had the browser bundle. Awesome, cool. Uh, and this is like uh, a side project, or are you? I, I think you are doing uh, like finishing school right now. Is this part of like research for school or just hacking? Um, no, it's uh, just a personal project, and yeah, it's my last year, and maybe then I start looking for a job. Sweet. In awesome. that field. Yeah. Does anyone else ask questions? Sounds good. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for jumping and, and showing it. I, like, I learned about it today and I got super excited. Cool. So any um, other things to discuss today that people want to use this time for? Otherwise, I guess we can close this meeting and go back to the internet to continue hacking and see everyone else next week or during the IPLD deep dives Thursday. If you are interested, definitely go to the issue on IPFS PM for IPLD deep dives and, and yeah, like give a thumbs up to the, um, the comment that says that the meeting is Thursday so that we know how many people are coming. All right, thank you so much. Have a great week. See you all, hopefully during the week or next week. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording right now. Bye-bye. See you guys, bye-bye. See you guys.